Hello guys, today I want to look at one of the Sith bonuses for the Gurjaras, the one that allows them to garrison their sheep to the mill and generate food for them. How much does this bonus actually do for you, and what are the trade-offs? It's a surprisingly loaded question, so let's take a look. To start with some basics, there are two different types of herdables with different food production rates. When garrisoned, sheep, turkey, llama, goat, pig and goose, all of those who hold 100 food inside of them will generate 3.5 food per minute. Cow and water buffalo, on the other hand, who both hold 150 food inside, will generate around 5.25 food per minute. While this already tells us that cows are actually better at gathering food for you, the reality is often disappointing, and the advantage is not as much as you might think. That is because cows spawn in smaller groups than the rest. In standard maps, you can expect to find 8 sheep or 6 cows. And in the end, both groups effectively produce a very similar amount of food per minute, 28 for the group of sheep and 31 for the group of cows. You can imagine this as almost one and a half villagers silently working and collecting food for you. That means you can obtain the same amount of food quicker than normal or move a villager from food to another resource and collect whatever you need there. To compare this bonus to some other similar bonuses, for example to the Burgundian relic bonus, every relic generates about 15 food per minute when garrisoned. This food trickle is much less than the Gerjaran bonus and comes online earliest in Castle Age, when the small food trickle stops being as crucial. The mines get plus one villager from the start, the Gerjaras gain 1.5, but admittedly a bit later, as soon as you can put your sheep inside. And well, that's nice and all, trickle of food always comes in handy, but what are the trade-offs? Well, you are basically locking up 800 to 900 food, which you would normally use and collect in the Dark Age. If you're collecting food from a sheep, the carcass is slowly rotting. This means you will never get the full 100 food, but rather around 90 of it. With this in mind, the locked up sheep will generate their worth in about 25 and a half minutes, and cows in 26. Now, that is obviously a very long time. Some games don't even last that long, and locking up so many resources might sound risky. So can we afford to spare the food and let it slowly trickle? If we take a look around our starting town center, ignore all the sheep and collect everything else first, you can generally expect two boars or two elephants or rhinos, three to four deer that spawn around the town, and six standard berry bushes, plus two berry bushes that the Gujaras get as a sieve bonus. After calculating in the decay, in total for Gujaras, there is something in the range of 1990 to 2230 food. That is actually plenty of food and will realistically take you around 13 minutes to go through until there is nothing left to collect anymore. At that point, if you build the mill right at the start of the game, the sheep inside will have generated 300 to 350 food, depending on how fast you found them and when they started working for you. If we add that to the total amount, it is on average still a bit less than what we would normally get if we decided to eat our sheep with a normal civilization without the two berry bushes. You will also finish your food about a minute faster than normal civilizations. That means we will either have to start farming sooner than the other sieves or eat our garrison sheep, effectively ending the bonus. So let's look at what is the ideal approach. Something that is important to realize is the timing here. At 13 to 14 minutes, you will be well into feudal, getting closer and closer to the castle age, which is a point in the game when one extra villager starts to be a bit less important. For this reason alone, if you start running out of food to collect, sacrificing a few sheep is a totally reasonable idea, and I would say it's even recommended. After eating the sheep, we are looking at around 400 extra food from sheep and 250 extra food from the berry bushes that the Gurjaras get. Everything by around 15 minutes without spending any wood on farms. Something to keep in mind is that you will have to eat all the deer. That means pushing the deer and sacrificing map vision or building a mill for 100 wood and exposing your villagers. If you are a pocket player, those might not worry you as much, but in 1 vs 1s you might not have the luxury to spend all the time on that and would rather start collecting your sheep right after finishing your boars and berries. In that case, you can expect to run out of your boars and berries around the 11th minute mark, giving you around 250 bonus food generated from the sheep plus 250 from the berry bushes. If we compare this food with some other Dark Age bonuses from other civilizations, for example uh, Lithuanians that start with 100 50 food, Hindustanis with their cheaper villagers bonus, uh, but this bonus will save you around 80 food by the time that you're going to the castle age, um, and maybe Ethiopians who get plus 100 food and plus 100 gold 
every time they advance, totaling up to 200 food and gold by castle. The Kercharan bonus being arguably one of the best out there. With some maps, this bonus will feel even better. For example, Yucatan, Ghost Lake, Lombardia, Land Nomad, which are all maps with extra herdables. The bonus is also very strong in games with low population limit. Extra production that does not consume your population space is extremely valuable then. Some interesting strategy in that case might be to team up with Tatars, who get two sheep every time they build a new town center, starting from Castle Age. But again, I would reserve this for the low, low population games, as it's not worth it to hassle normally. To be fair, it will take some practice to execute everything perfectly. Resources will feel very tight at the beginning, you will need to chop straggler trees to get enough wood for a lumber camp, but in the end, it will be worth it. I recommend looking at some build orders online, there is plenty of them. There is a great video by T-West, where he talks about possible spawn points of your herdables around the town center. To close this video off with some interesting interactions, if you convert a Gujaran mill with cows inside, they will get ejected, but weirdly enough, you can still garrison them inside again. This is not possible with any other mill, but you will still get no food generated, unless you are playing Gerjaras yourself. And in case that you're wondering if you could garrison animals to a converted Falwark, well, you can't. Even as Gerjaras, it will not let you. The animals are just too picky. And that is it from me. Thank you for watching, and see ya!